today we have Jeremy Galloway from the Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee here to talk about the prison system in this country. America has the highest amount of incarcerated people in the world and the highest rate of incarceration. Georgia is ranked around number five. The South has the highest in the country. One in three black men born today, um, they say, will spend some time in these prisons. And the rate of black women are quickly growing. So Jeremy is here to give us a look into the prison system and its stats. Corporations are making more and more money off of the incarceration of our people. And it has become the new form of slavery and Jim Crow. So here's Jeremy Galloway. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, Jeremy. So, Jeremy, would you mind uh, kind of, you know, uh, Dawn sort of opened it up, and uh, it's it's no secret. It's printed in major magazines and newspapers uh, all the time about how the United States has the highest rate of incarceration of any country in the whole world, yeah. how there are greater incarceration uh, than during apartheid South Africa, mm -hmm. that there are more black men in prison uh, than there were slaves uh, in the United States right before um, the Civil War. So can you um, let our listeners get just a few of the reasons why this is so? Uh, well, uh, one of the big reasons, uh, and I do a lot of work in this area, is uh, drug policy and uh, drug prohibition. Um, uh, if you look at um, statistics uh, um, for incarceration in the United States, um, it, from the early 1900s up through around 1970, um, the, uh, the uh, jail, combined jail and prison population hovered around 200,000 consistently. Um, uh, in 1971, uh, Richard Nixon declared uh, a war on drugs, and um, uh, sorry, <laughs> um, and uh, right around that time, you see a huge spike that's uh, that's gone up and uh, hasn't really leveled out. And so right now, we're at about. Uh, 2.3 million people incarcerated in the United States um, on any given day. Um, and then when you add so everybody who's on probation, on you, parole, yeah, and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. I'm looking at an article that says it's around 11 million, no, 7 million, 7 million. Yeah, um, the, uh, the national figure is one in 31 people under some form of correctional supervision, which includes jails and prisons, uh, as well as um, parole, probation, um, uh, people in detention centers, work release, that sort of thing. Um, in Georgia, uh, we have the dubious distinction of being uh, number one in that category, uh, with one in 13 people under uh, correctional supervision. That's a question I have yeah. about this. Is the what are what are the differences in the South in terms of incarceration? Can you tell? A, a, is there a quantitative or qualitative difference? Um, there's definitely more people. Um, the there um, the there are uh, more people of color incarcerated in the South than than you see in the North. Um, uh, and uh, the the punishments are a lot more harsh in the South. For for um, for the similar crimes that you, that you would have in other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to ask you, about, uh, you know, because one of the things we're talking about is uh, is what's coming up in the fall uh, with the anniversary of Attica, uh, with with uh, this prisoner strike. Yes. Um, and of course, there have been rebellions and actions in, in prisons, you know, since they probably started. And I think what, what we've seen, certainly, we've had a number of people on the program. We've talked about the hunger strikes at Stewart. We've talked about the strike that took place in Georgia several years ago, and it was multiple prisoners 
uh, who refused to work. Um, and it goes back many more years beyond that. And so maybe we could talk now a little bit about both that who's in prison because this is a program about workers and of course the majority of people who end up in jails are, are working class and poor people, people who can't yeah. afford high priced lawyers and who are also um, really mis misserved, underserved and horribly misrepresented in the court system. So perhaps we could talk a little bit about why the issue of mass incarceration is actually very much a worker issue. Because it's where you can always yes. get a job, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, yeah. Um, most people who are incarcerated, um, as you said, are, are, are working class or, or poor, which fall, would fall under the definition you gave at the beginning of the program of um, who, are, who is a worker. Um, and once they get behind bars, um, uh, many of them uh, are coerced into working for the state, um, sometimes uh, to for, for the benefit of uh, private in, uh, uh, corporations. Um, uh, and uh, in most places, uh, workers are paid, uh, incarcerated workers are paid pennies uh, per hour. Um, in Georgia, they're not they're not paid at all. Um, so um, Georgia inmates are. Uh, forced to work uh, under threat of losing uh, the few privileges that they have, which uh, would include visitation from uh, family members, phone calls, um, commissary privileges, um, uh, and uh, for, for not, for, they, they don't get anything in return. <laughs> um, and uh, that's one of the reasons that, uh, that was one of the, the major uh, driving factors behind the 2010 uh, prison strikes in Georgia that you talked about, which, um, which uh, involved uh, about seven or eight uh, prisons across the state and that were, uh, that kind of kicked off this um, continuous uh, stream of uh, prison resistance in the South. Um, the, uh, the organizers of those uh, strikes were targeted by the Department of Corrections um, and um, some of them were beaten by, with hammers uh, and that was captured on video. Um, as far as I've been able to uh, uh, uncover, uh, nobody, uh, none of the, the officers involved, uh, some of them lost their jobs, but none has been uh, incarcerated uh, sure. for their role in uh, clearly beating uh, in, inmates, two inmates with hammers. Um, and there, there's some uh, very uh, graphic uh, video of that. The other uh, uh, other response also was to throw people into isolation. Oh yeah, they, uh, solitary. That's that's, that's a common uh, tactic is uh, uh, beating beating up uh, people um, who who do resist and uh, locking them uh, locking them in isolation until they heal up, uh, and so their families can't see them, lawyers can't see them, um, no no one gets you know no one can see the results of what's happened and. Um, any sign of resistance uh, in, in uh, prisons is met with that sort of retaliation and uh, a lot of times you'll see um, <clears throat> inmates uh, transferred between facilities um, if, they're, if the Department of Corrections considers them to be um, problem, uh, uh, you know, problematic. The, that's that was a really a very highly effective uh, tactic uh, until recently with the advent of um, mobile phones and um, the fact that they're widely available inside uh, prisons now um, and that's how the 2010 strikes were coordinated um, they weren't uh, I mean they were coordinated by inmates on the inside um, with each other so um, that was that was kind of a turning point in, in how uh, resistance in prisons uh, happens, and it's given uh, incarcerated people um, a lot more control over um, how they um, how they resist um, and how they can coordinate uh, work stoppages, hunger strikes, um, and uh, how they communicate with people on the outside. Um, which had formerly been completely you know, any any communication out with the outside world had been uh, under complete control of the the, uh, the prison uh, administration, 
until that point. And so now we have uh, we we have a little bit of a different dynamic, um, and the that resistance has spread to um, other states. Uh, probably the most one of the most significant uh, would be Alabama, uh, where there's an organization called the Free Alabama Movement, um, which is uh, made up of incarcerated people in Alabama, men and women, uh, and it's uh, also their families and, uh, and supporters on the outside. Um, and they, uh, they've, uh, they've established a model um, uh, that's laid out in a, in a manifesto called um, Let the Crops Rot in the Fields, um, uh, which is available online. Um, and it talks about um, how basically how the entire prison uh, system in the United States is dependent on inmate labor. Inmates do everything uh, in, in the prisons except unlock, unlock the cages, pretty much. Uh, they prepare the food, they uh, clean the facilities, they, they do the laundry, they, um, I mean, they, do, they run the commissary, they do everything. Um, and they, they, they even build the prison. <laughs> they they the also, prison a lot of people may not know that major corporations contract. Oh, yeah. So that, for example, <clears throat> Motorola, Compaq, Honeywell, Microsoft, Revlon, Chevron, TWA, Victoria's Secret, and Eddie Bauer, just for example, their products or their services is actually done by oh, yeah. prison labor. We only have a few seconds really left, so <laughs> let's get to what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, so September 9th is the 45th anniversary of the Attica Prison Uprising, and uh, there are uh, prison strike work stoppages and hunger strikes planned across the country. Um, Free Alabama Movement is one of the organizations uh, that's, that's um, behind that. Um, their website is freealabamamovement.com. Uh, you can get information there. Uh, a lot of people from Atlanta are going to be in Alabama uh, for uh, for the strikes on September 9th. Um, the uh, Atlanta Anarchist Black Cross uh, is uh, has conducted a series of noise demonstrations outside local jails and uh, outside prisons in Alabama um, and letter writing. Um, their website is atlblackcross.nfshost.com. Uh, and there's information about uh, letter writing uh, events and noise demonstrations available there. And the Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee of the uh, Industrial Workers of the World, um, which is coordinating uh, some of these events on a national level. Um, the, uh, their website is uh, IWOC, uh, iwoc.noblogs.org. Uh, and you can get information uh, about the national call to uh, resist prison slavery um, at, at, uh, at that website. Um, and here in Atlanta, the uh, Atlanta IWW email is atlantaiww at gmail.com for anybody who might be interested in finding out more or getting involved. Um, are we out of time? We're out of time. Two seconds left, okay. <laughs> Lots of information, but yeah, thank you for uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming, Jeremy, and sharing this with yeah. us. Thank you. All right, stay tuned, folks. Uh, we're going to take another little brief break for a message, and then our next guest, Patricio Cambias, is here, and we're going to talk about students against sweatshops, another mm -hmm. form of mm -hmm. yeah. very much exploited labor. Thank you. Stay tuned. Thank you, Jeremy.